good morning everyone uh, could you please confirm in the chat box that i'm audible or not no oh thank you very much i hope you're in active yes yes thank you thank you very much thank you very much i got it i got it guys yes hey good morning to everyone once again uh, let me introduce myself uh, myself ali mohan here i have total 7 plus years of experience into it uh, currently also i'm working as a devops engineer as per in the today's session we're going to discussing about now uh, what is jenkins and what is automation then why do you go for the automation so how do you implement the automation this is the concepts which we're going to discuss in the today's session so i'm just going to wind up the session by you know like 10:15 or 10:30 near to 10:30 like that yeah so first of all uh, before i'm just moving to this session i would like to know that uh, how many of you guys completed devops course here in this particular participants Can you please raise your hands? Uh, how many are completed DevOps course, are working as a DevOps in the need, or uh, somebody is working on AWS platform or GCP platform, or it maybe. So out of two seventy seven, we have seventeen members are working as a DevOps in the need or an AWS platform. Can I tell like that? Yes, that's fine. Thank you, thank you guys. You can uh, down your hands. Yes. Jaws. Okay, fine. So, how many guys are uh, you know pursuing DevOps codes? Uh, you are uh, you know belongs to different different institutions. Currently, you are pursuing DevOps codes. Could you please raise your hands? I don't want to name it. Uh, you are working. You are uh, attending for different institutions. That will be fine. Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. So, I would like to know how many are freshers here. So you are freshly passed out uh, this year, and you're looking for a job, and you would like to learn something. Raise your hands. Yes. Thirty-four, thirty-three. That's great. That's great. Yes, that's fine. If you passed out at Lenovo, two thousand fifteen or two thousand seventeen or whatever, maybe. But I need uh, the count. So that is according to that, I will just go to have a session. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Great. Thank you very much. So, anyone from here, uh, Dharmavaram Polytechnic College? Anyone join here from Dharmavaram Polytechnic College? Raise your hands. A S I E A H I. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for your responses. Let's move to the today's session. Uh, I first of all, I wish you good luck. I uh, hope you'll have a great session today. And first, we'll just go with introduction. What is uh, you know DevOps? Uh, why do you want to go with the DevOps? And what exactly the Jenkins is going to play a vital role? The end of the session, I will take a questions. Okay, I will have the twenty minutes of time, so I'll just have the interaction with you guys. So I will just give a wrap up plan. What you want to do? Become a DevOps engineer. What is the career path we have to choose? All these things we'll discuss. Yes, thank you very much. So, anyone have any idea about what is application? So, I will just ask simple question to everyone. You guys can answer in the chat box. I would like to know about what is application first of all. What is application? My question is. My question to the participant. The first question is all about what is application. What is software application? Okay. So application like example on URL, working software, uh, a collection of set of programs for forming a particular task, set of instructions written in high level language. Uh, yes, will be the uh, yes yes they'll upload it. 
a group of program executed for whom the task is. Yes. Right. Okay. Fine, guys. Thank you very much. Say, for example, you would like to travel from your native place to Hyderabad. Which apps you are going to choose to book your tickets? My question is, which are the booking ticket booking applications? Yes. Red bus, IRTC. I'm asking about bus, okay, and not about trains, okay. That is my question. Abhi bus, okay. Red bus, okay. Okay, okay. Paytm, that's great. Bhavana, Paytm, Abhi bus, Red bus, APSRTSound.com, that's great. TSRTC.com, that is also there. Yes, etc. Okay, fine. Is uh, Nikki said directly, etc. Okay. TSRTC.co.in, that's fine. Okay, fine. For example, I would like to place an, a, a food order. I would like to have something. Let's say, for example, it be at 12 o'clock. Uh, there is no restaurants outside. Then what is the solution for that? We are doing online orders, right? So which application you are doing online orders? For which application you are doing online orders for the food? What are the applications are there? We are Swiggy, Zomato. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. Okay, fine. Just thank you. Red bus, uh, red, red bucket. I don't know red bucket really. Uh, first time I'm just uh, saying that. DoorDash. Oh, that's great. Yes, thank you very much. I can see that uh, most of you guys are having a great. I think you guys are eating online only. Then. Okay, fine. So we have seen about, uh, I, you know, I have asked a couple of questions like what is the software application, which are the we, uh, no, which are the ticket booking applications and online order applications, you know, all these things. So who is going to love these applications? Anyone have any idea about it? Who is going to develop all these applications? Who is going to develop all these applications? That's my question. And okay, let's see that. Uh, using programming language, developers, IT company, there are complete uh, teams, major role played in dev developers, okay. Java, Python, Dreadnought engineers, full stack engineers, dev team for their company, okay. That's great. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, guys. I'm really happy that uh, everyone is active and it is a really interactive session. Let's rock it. Okay. So we have seen about uh, different kind of applications we have. And we discussed about software application as well. Now, I will explain what is software application after some time. Now, try to understand that if we we'll take any application. Let's say, for example, I would like to start online business. Or else I would like to start a restaurant business. When I would like to start a restaurant business, what we required? Let's say, a leave a boat, we required a you know, place where we can set up your hotel. We need a kitchen place. They have some people, customers will go you know, sitting and they will eat. Leave about all the things. If talk, talk about in the software perspective, when talk about the software perspective, we need a software. We need a, a software. Let's say, for example, I need a software application. That is what we can call as a building software application. Building software application. If we we'll take this building software application, what would I like to do this? Say, for example, if you we'll go to any restaurant, if you we'll go to any small tiffin center also, everyone has have the dabba. And they're going to see, for example, you're ordering uh, two masala doses, two egg dosa, or whatever you are going to order in a morning tiffin section. Or if you'll go to afternoon section, they'll be having meals, uh, you know, they'll be chapati, chicken biryani, chicken 65, you know, all these things, right? So we have different kind of, uh, you know, uh, softwares we have. If you'll go to restaurants, they have their laptop, they have, they have you know, a laptop or they have a desktop. And they're going to, you know, press some keys and they're going to, the they will go to the bill, right? So how it is going to be happen, all these things, because of the building softwares. Now, who is going to develop these building software applications? Who is going to develop building applications or ticket booking applications or online order applications? If you take any kind of application in the world, who is going to build all these applications? I mean to say, 
developing all the applications. In a software industry, there are two teams we have. One is the dev team and we have a ops team. Dev stands for development team, ops stands for operations team. So I will tell you about uh, what are the, you know, the requirements we require to develop any kind of application. Let's say, for example, after some time, we'll talk about uh, first the base level. After that, I will take you through the what is Jenkins, how do you automate this application deployment and all these things. I'm sure that you'll be having a great time today. So please try to concentrate what we are learning. So in case if you have any questions, you can feel free to, uh, you know, raise your hand. The end of the session, I will take you all questions. Let's say we have a dev team. So dev team is all about development team. Let's say, for example, we have a client. So we have a client. For example, I'm the client. So I'm just going to start a restaurant business. I need a software application which I can able to, you know, uh, do all the transaction. I mean to say, every day I will get, let's say, for example, 2000 customers I will get. If I'll get 2000 customers, I cannot able to write all the things manually, right? I should have to, you know, keep all the things in account notebook. I have to make a note that, you know, what is the customer is ordering, how much money he paid, how much change I have written back, you know, all these things will be too much headache. That is what reason only I need application where I can able to, where I can able to do all the building actions and also where I can able to do daily, daily reports, like, you know, how much money I got weekly I reports. I have to generate like how much got this money and I have to generate every month reports like hey, this month, how much money I got it. So I can able to calculate like how much money I invested, how much profit I got it very easily to the software applications. Who is going to develop all the application? Now, forgot about uh, source code, forgot about all these things. Now, who is going to develop this application? The software development team, they're going to develop the application. What is the roles and responsibilities responsibility of a software development team? Don't any, don't ask any questions right now. Concentrate on my lecture, what I'm just going to discussing right now. And uh, I will tell you about uh, when we have to interact with you, with me, okay? Let's try to concentrate on the session. Let's say we have a development team and we require a client. Let's say, for example, myself is a client. I need a software application. Whom I'm going to approach? I'm going to approach a software organization. It may be MNC company. It may be middle level three company. It may startup company. It can be any company. It may be. If you have a MNC company, uh, it can be any company. So first we'll approach the software organization and we're going to share the requirements with our technical team. Usually, Every software organization has the internal marketing team. Their job is to send an email to each and every organization. Let's say where different, different vendors will be there, right? They will send an email to each and every vendor and they have any requirements. If they suit the requirements, they'll come back to your email and they will say that uh, this is the, my requirement. Could you please, you know, build my software application. This is the price I'm just going to give. And this is a you know period of time I'm just giving. It is possible or not. If it is possible, the project is going to be onboarded. Let's say, for example, we have a software development team. Let's say the technical team collected all the requirements. Technical team, they collected all the requirements. Let's say our tech team has collected all the requirements and they pass this requirements to whom? They're going to pass this requirement to software development team. All right. So before they're going to pass this uh, uh, requirement to software development team, there is another thing they have to do by the requirements team. Whenever they're going to collect all the requirements, uh, nowadays, we are not following the setup, but we are going to uh, prepare the SRS document that is called a software requirement specification document. And this, this document I'm just sending to the client. Once it's get it approved, then I will just go with the software development. The, what is the responsibility of the software development team? They will just uh, taking care of design. So they will, be, before design, they're going to plan it. After that, they will design. And after that, what they will do? They are going to develop the application. They're going to develop the application. And here again, the responsibility of a test, you know, development team is also, they will do the testing. So these are the four primary responsibilities of a development team. So we have a planning, we have a design, we have developing, and they're going to test the application. What are the application they have developed? The same application they are going to test the application. Let's assume that I have planned it, I've designed it, application, I have developed the application with my team, and we have test the application. Let's assume that my application working properly. My application working properly. Now, what I want to do, I want to give access to the customers, right? When you go to your, your you know, internet platform, like, you know, Google browser, Microsoft Edge browser, Mozilla Firefox, if you type www.flipkart.com, can you able to access the Flipkart website? Yes, I can able to access the Flipkart access website. Then how you are going to access the Flipkart website? 
where is application have you think any time i think uh, will never bother about where is my where is application from where i'm getting response and all this if you type www.flipkart.com yes you are getting the application that means you are getting response from the server that's it but so who is going to do the development activity let's say for example application we have developed and we have designed and we tested all the application now what i want to do i want to deploy the application what is meant by deployment deployment is all about whatever the application we have developed and we have tested and we have built it this application i would like to deploy into the my server who is going to do all these activities will do by the operations team again don't ask me question like what is a server a server is a high configuration computer where we are going to configure all your application server web servers database servers and that we go deploy the application into the your server when deploy the application into your server the application is going to be live that means when i will type www.etos.com i should access my application to the internet that means application came into live environment whenever you want to come to your application to live environment we have to deploy the application who is going to taking care of the deployment part the operations team will taking care of the deployment part we have a operations team operations team will taking care of deployments and also they will taking care of the servers they will take care taking care of infrastructure they will taking care of backups so we have development team and we have operations team operations team will taking care of uh, servers they will taking care of deployments and they will taking care of infrastructure they will taking care of all the backups now when i want to deploy any kind of application to my server first i need to set up my server like you know how much ram we required how much storage we required and also development team will send a set of instruction to the operations team according to that i want to set up my server to de deploy any kind of application let's say for example so we have a server uh, so let's say for example i want i just converted everything into etos.exe file or etos dot uh, war file, whatever it may be. I just converted my application into the executable files. What is executable files? We are going to convert the entire source code into executable format because we are not delivering the source code to the client. That is not what we are doing. So we have to convert the entire application into like an executable files. Executable files is all about. We are going to convert the application to machine readable format. That is what we are doing the execution here. Let's say, for example, I converted all the application into .exe format or .war format or .er format. If it's Java application, we're going to convert the application into .jar format. Let's say we have the executable files. This executable files where I'm just going to deploy, I'm just deploying into where? Into the server here. So we are going to deploy into the server. So who will do the deployment here? The operations team. So I hope you guys are very clear about what is the development team, what is the operations team. Can I get answer in the chat box if you guys are clear or not? If you guys are clear, I will tell you about now how we can do the automation this process. Clear everyone so far? Anyone have any questions? Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Thank you. See, I don't worry about this infrastructure. Don't worry about the servers. Don't worry backups. You know all these things. It is very too early to talk about all these things. First, try to try to you know understand about what is application and who is going to develop the application. Where I'm just going to deploy the application. Deploying is all about when I say deployment. When I say deployment is all about installing, installing application into where into server this process whatever i'm just going to follow this process what we can call as a deployment process okay so we have a server and i would like to deploy the application to where into the server somebody asking about question like you know what is etos.exe what is etos.war file all these things for example if you go to windows laptop and you would like to install any application say for example you want to install a Notepad plus plus, and you want to install any kind of, for example, you want to install Java, you want to install any kind of software, you are going to download .exe files. Let me show you that. If I'll just go to my downloads, I'll just show you that. If I'll just go to downloads, 
say for example, I have downloaded this putty terminal, right? If we'll just go to here and right click, go to the properties. What is the file format it is? It is all about .exe format. .exe format, just give a second. Yes. If we'll go to agent here, it is jar file. If we'll go to any kind of software which you download, we can see that this is the Apache Tomcat which I have downloaded. If I'll just go to the properties here, if I'll go to properties, what is the file format it is? .dxc format. Like that, we're going to convert the entire application code into executable files. That is what we can call it as a executable packages. Now, where I would like to deploy this application into the server. So who is going to taking care of all these activities? Say, for example, so we have to plan it, we have designed, we have developed the application. Now, I would like to do the testing activity. I would like to do the build activity. I would like to create a server. Inside the server, I would have deployed the applications. Here, a DevOps is all about, it is a combination of development team and operations team. It is a combination of development team and operations team. The mainly two things which is going to do by the development and DevOps team. The first thing about collaboration. Collaboration is first thing. And the second thing is all about automation. Okay. I will explain about what is a collaboration. I will explain about what is meant by automation. Collaboration is all about, the collaboration is all about, say for example, we had two different kind of teams we have. One is the development team and one is the operations team. Let's say oper development team has developed the application and the instructed to the operations team to deploy the application. Now, where is the development team is going to deploy the application in the production server? But development team where this uh, test the application, they have tested the application in where? They test the application in my local mission. What are the whatever the mission they are working in this particular in this particular mission only they are going to test the application. When I test the application in my local mission, it is working fine. When I test the application in the deployment, uh, I mean to say in the production environment, it is not working fine. Then whose problem it is? There is a configuration mismatching with the production environment and uh, with the development environment. What happening over there? Development team will say that our test the application. It is working fine. There is a fault from your side. Go and check it. Operation team will say that I have tested the application. It is not working on my production environment. Could you please recheck from your side? It is simple logic here. There is a blaming between operations team and development team because there is a communication gap between these two teams. Because of that reason, what is happening? It will take some time to deploy my application into production environment. There is a blaming is going on. The configuration files are mismatching. I'm unable to deploy the application to the production environment. So customers will not be able to access my application. What happening here? Delay is happening between to development process to the deployment process. To fill the gap between these two teams, whatever we discussed so far, there is a team called as the DevOps team. Then what is automation? Automation is all about, we have to automate the process. When the application team develop the application, I mean, so they have done the source code. When the source code stored into some rep GitHub repository, I have to take the source code automatically. And after that, I would like to deploy the application to production environment as soon as possible. I'll just explain a, a clear cut picture now. Look at my screen carefully what exactly we are going to do in this particular today's session. And what are the tools we require to the automation, all these things. I'll explain in today's session. I look at my screen carefully. This diagram, if you'll understand, you can understand what exactly I'm just going to demonstrate on today's workshop. Just go to here. I will just give me a second. I'm just logging to my apps.diagram.net. Okay. Let's say we have a development team. We have set up software development engineers out there. They are going to write the application source code. So let's assume that he is a developer. Uh, he's from the development team and they're going to write the software development code. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, so we have a software development team and what they are doing, they are doing that in the software application code. Okay, now what I would like to do is nothing but, where I need to store all my source code? I have to store all my source code in my source code management. That is what we can call as a GitHub. 
I would like to store all my source code into the GitHub. So GitHub is a cloud-based tool where we can store all the source code. We have a Git, GitHub, we have Bitbucket, and we have GitLab. You know, we have so many tools are available in the market. But one of the most popular tool it is a source code management tool is all about GitHub. So Git is all about version control system. Don't think about Git right now. Think about only GitHub. So we have a GitHub where I can store all my source code in my SEM source code management tools. Let's assume that I have done the development of the application. I have stored my all application into the source code management tool that is called GitHub repositories. When I say repository is all about, we are going to create a, we are going to create a folder inside the GitHub repository. And the, in the, inside the folder only, I'm going to store my all my application code. Let's say for example, so we have the source code management tool in the GitHub and I stored all my source code. Now, where is my source code? My source code is available on my GitHub. Now, what I want to do with the source code? What I want to do the source code? Yes. Yes. Now, what I want to do the source code? I would like to do the build activity. Listen carefully. When the source code is available on my GitHub repository, I would like to perform the build activity. So what is the build activity right now? The build is all about, we are going to convert the source code into executable packages. So I would like to compile the code and I want to find out any kind of errors are available or not. And after that, I want to convert the source code into executable packages, which is a tool which I'm just going to discuss now. Here we, read, we required a build tool, which is the most popular build tool. We have a Maven. We have a Maven is a build tool. If it is Java application, if it is a like, you know, if it is a .NET application, if it is a Node.js application, so we have a NPM is Node.js application build tool. If you'll go to .NET, MS build is a, one of the build tools, but most of the popular build tool is nothing but a Maven build tool. So what is this uh, build activity? The build is, activity is all about convert source code into executable packages executable packages this process what we can call it as a build activity clear so far we have a software development team they're going to write the they're going to write the source code and they're storing in where in the github repository and after that i'm just pulling the source code from my github repository i'm performing the build activity so far clear everyone anyone have any questions i'll pass a bit over here yes PIP. I need response from you guys. Are you understood or not? If you guys understood, mention S in the chat box. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. So we have a source code and we have a now the build tool, which is going to convert my application into executable files. Now, what I would like to do in this particular build activity, what I would like to do this particular build activity and I have the packages now, right now. Let's say we have dot var files. So we have dot jar files. Let's say we have all this kind of executable packages we have. So what is the other name for this all the executable files is all about artifacts. What is the other name? The other name is all about artifacts. Now I would like to store all my source, all my artifact into in a repository. So why? Because the software development team is not going to develop the application a single day. Every day they will work, every day they're going to write new, new features and every day they're going to implement new versions of the code. And I want to do build activity. I want to, for, I want to generate all the artifacts with the different kind of versions. And I would like to store all the artifact in where in the Nexus artifact repository tool. We have a tool called Nexus. It is artifact repository tool where we can store all the artifacts, where we can store the, all the artifacts. I will just go to here. So here we are going to be discussing about Nexus and also we're going to be discussing about Maven and also we're going to be discussing about uh, Sonarkib as well. Okay. 
what is the purpose of the nexus tool the nexus is all about uh, to store the art artifacts to store the artifacts let's move on here and we have a nexus tool let's say we have nexus tool. and what is i can do with the nexus tool i can store the artifacts i can store the artifacts give me a second So let's see, we have a build tool and we have Nexus. Nexus is all about, we can store the, all the artifacts. See, artifacts, executables, both are same guys. Don't confuse over yet. Executables are nothing but the converting source code into artifacts. Okay. Let's see if I, converting source code into executable files, that is what we can call as artifacts. I can store all the artifacts into my Nexus tool. So in the Nexus, I'm just going to create repositories. Inside the repositories, I'm going to store all the artifacts. I can store all the artifacts. I can store all the artifacts where? In the Nexus repositories. See, for example, so if I store all the artifacts in the Nexus repository, then what I want to do, I would like to check the source code quality. If we we'll take any software application, the first and foremost metric is we have to check whether the application source code is secure or not. So many of this, uh, you know, I think everyone knows, aware about, we have a software development team. When we don't get any logic, what we'll do, we'll, do, we'll go to Google Tally and we'll, write, we'll just write a problem what we have and we're going to copy the code and we'll do some modification according to our requirements and we're going to exactly copy the same code. I'm just going to paste in the project. Because of that reason, what happening? We are not going to make some kind of metrics. So what I can do? So I would like to check whether my source code is secure or not. So how can we check the source code quality? Source code quality, we're going to check with help of the tool called as a sonar cube. A sonar cube is a tool which is helping to check the source code quality. So we have an access. Now I'm checking the source code quality. Okay. Let's say we have, these are the tools we have. Git, Maven, Nexus, sonar cube. I'm just explaining all these things are manually, right? Then what is the point of the Jenkins over here? A Jenkins is all about CI-CD tool. Jenkins is nothing but a continuous integration, continuous deployment. Here, with help of the Jenkins, what I'm just going to do is all about, I'm just going to automate the things. What are the things you are going to automate? I'm just going to integrate uh, Git with my Jenkins. Just go to here and integrate Git with the Jenkins. And after that, what I can do that? I can able to integrate Maven. I can integrate Nexus. I can integrate software you know, code quality called Sonar Key, you know, all these things. Why do you want to perform the automation? Because every day software development team, they're going to write the source code. They'll get, they'll, they'll push the source code into my GitHub repository. As soon as they're going to push the source code to my GitHub repository, with help of the Jenkins, I want to pull the code. And after that, I would like to go for the Maven and I would like to do the build activity and I would like to push my artifact to Nexus repository and I would like to check the code quality with the Sonar cube. Once you've done all these activities, what I would like to do, I want to deploy the application where I would like to deploy the application into my production server. So we have a production environment called a server. I'm just going to deploy the application into the production server. Let's say, let's say for example, in this particular workshop, we learned about Tomcat server. So we have a Tomcat server. It is all about the application server, which I'm just going to deploy the application into my production environment. Let's say it is my prod environment. So in this production environment, I'm just going to use Tomcat is my application server. We have a application server. That is but a Tomcat server. So I'm just going to integrate all the tools here. I'm going to integrate source code management tool. I'm going to integrate Maven. 
I'm going to integrate Nexus. I'm going to integrate Nexus on our Kim. And also I'm just going to integrate a Tomcat server. With how I'm just going to integrate all the tools, I'm just going to integrate all the tools with the next Jenkins over here. Still, I have not discussed about Jenkins. Just wait a minute. I'm just explaining the flow. What exactly we're going to do in the software industry. So we have a, all the tools are nothing but DevOps tools. We have different kind of tools available in the market, which is going to help you a lot do the automation with the help of the Jenkins. Okay. Let me write, a, write another diagram so that you can able to understand what exactly and what is going to be happening in the software industry. Okay. Clear so far? Anyone have any questions? Anyone have any questions so far? Is it clear? Yes. I should get 100 responses, but I'm not getting guys. I don't know. Everyone is active or not. Tomcat, we're going to integrate with the Jenkins, sir. Yes. Okay, it's a clear. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now try to understand this diagram, okay? Uh, what is the diagram I'm just going to explain right now? Understand this. Let's say we have a software development team. Just go to the images and right here, software development team. Just give me five, 10 minutes of time. Once you complete the diagram, we'll go to the hands-on experience. Okay. My main motive is before you are going to discussing all the things, be confident on the basics. Why we have to go with the tool and how to do automation. What is the point of the automation? All this we have to learn. When you're learning any technology, when you're learning anything, if you learn DevOps, if you learn AWS, if you learn Azure, if you learn GCP, if you learn Java, Python, C, C++, Selenium, whatever it may be, first we have to question yourself why, why I have to learn this technology. If you question the why, automatically you can get the answer like how, you know, where I need to learn. Just for example, here I will just go to here the software development. We have a software developer team. Let's see, we'll just go to the images over here. I have, uh, let's say for example, I'm just going to copy the image and just go to here, control V. Go to the paint tool then. So because when you look at the picture, it is easy to understand. That's the reason only I'm just copying the pictures. Let's say this is a software development team. What they are going to do that? They're going to develop the application. Once they're going to develop the application, once they develop the application, what we have to do, we have to build the application. We have to build the application. They have built, they are going to write the source code and they're going to store all the source code in where they're going to store all the source code in the GitHub repositories. And let's say, for example, they're going to use a version control system that is called a Git is a tool with help of the Git tool. They're going to implement multiple versions of the code. Let's assume that once you write the complete, once you just store all the code, then what I want to do, I want to perform the build activity. This diagram is very important. Look at my screen very careful. So we have done the build activity. That means I want to convert my application code into packages. I want to convert the application code into packages. All right. So once you've done the application code into packages, then what I want to do, I want to do the testing activity, right? I want to do perform the testing activity. In the testing, we have different kind of testings we have. A system test environment, and also we have performance test environment. And we have after that, I would once we've done the testing activity, then what I would like to do is nothing but, I want to go for the deployment. Go for the deployment. Yeah, let's move on. So we have a testing. We have done the testing. Let's say, for example, I have performed the system testing and I performed performance testing here. The testing, all thing is completed. Then before I will have to deploy the application to my server environment, I want to test in my pre-production environment. I want to test the application where? In the pre-production environment. Let's say we have the 
pre production environment. I won't test the application in the pre production environment. This is what we can call the staging area. We can call it the UAT environment, or some people call it the pre production environment. All are both, all are same. UAT staging, pre production environment, everything are the same, guys. Now, once you've done the testing in the pre production environment, then what I want to do, I would like to test the application. I want to deploy the application where in the production environment. Where in the production environment? Let's say it is my production environment where I'm just going to deploy the application. This complete process, what we can call it as a CI, CD, that is called as a continuous integration, continuous delivery or deployment. So once you deploy the application in my production environment, what they can do that the customers can able to access my application. I'll just go to here, copy it. Yes, just go to here and paste it. Who is going to access my application? The customer will access my application. Customer will access my application. This, see, from the development, from the development, what the customers can able to access, they can able to access the application, whatever developed by the application development team. We want to access the application. These are all the steps which we need to follow it. We have to convert the application into executable packages. What are the application? I have done the build activity. After that, I will test the application. After that, I want to check in the in pre production environment whether the application is working properly or not. And after that, I'm just going to deploy the application in my production environment. Then the customers will access my application from the production environment. This complete diagram, what is all about a CI CD? What is my CI CD? CICD is all about continuous integration and continuous deployment. Let me explain what is Jenkins and why do you go for the Jenkins first. Okay. Then you can able to understand what is CICD in all these terms. So this is the Jenkins logo. This is the Jenkins logo. If you just see that one master will there. And if you just come down here and I, I can able to see that. Uh, so whenever the software developer team write the code, we are going to integrate the code of the, all the developers that point of time and we build and we test and we deliver or deploy that to the client. Whenever developers write the code, we are going to integrate all the code, all the developers that point of time, we build and we test and we will deliver or deploy to the client. This process, what we can call as a CI CD. I'm very clear. I explain about the process of what is the CI CD. I've written two diagrams over here. One diagram, it is all about what are the tools which I'm just going to use to complete the CI/CD process? And the other diagram I explained about what exactly you're going to work in the real-time environment. If you'll go to any software organization, this is the life cycle they're going to use to complete CI/CD process, the continuous integration and continuous deployment or delivery. Okay. Let's move on to a bit ahead. The Jenkins is going to help us to achieving this. So instead of doing a night builds, build and when the commit occurs by integrating all the code in the SCM source code management tool. What is this instead of night builds? Before DevOps came into the market, there is a build team is available and uh, they log in the night shift. What are the software development team they have developed in the in a daytime? They will take all the source code they're trying to execute the single command and they're going to check whether my source code is have any errors or not or am I able to convert into Excel packages or not? If build team is stuck somewhere, there is no communication between development team because both are working at different shifts to this is a disadvantage with the night builds. That's the reason only there is a solution for that. We have development DevOps team. They'll work in the day shift. They work along with the development team in case they are getting any kind of errors. As soon as my code is come to my GitHub repository, I'm performing the build activity. In case if I found any errors, if I'm able to convert the packages so I can able to contact the development team. There and then itself, I can sort out the errors, whatever it is there. We can see that integrating code is source code management tool. We perform the build activity tests and checking the quality of the code is what continuous integration. It is what is a continuous integration. So in a day, there will be so many integrations, so many builds, tests, and deliveries and deployments. We have we have so many integrations and so many builds we need to perform. We have to so many test cases we required and we need to deliver so many applications. So bugs will be reported faster and get rectified fast. So development will be going to be 
development happens fast. Because of this reasons only why we go with the concept called as a CI-CD process called Jenkins. I will just go to here. This is the terminology which we need to understand very clearly. The first is all about integration. What is my integration? Combining all the code written by the developers till some point of time, that is what we can call as integrate. Now, what is a build? We know about what is a build. That is a compile the code and make the small example packages. That is what we can call as a build activity. And what is test activity? Test in all the environments whether the application working properly or not. What are the application I have developed? What are the application I have built it? This application I would have text in the all environment whether my application working properly or not. What is meant by Archute? Archute is all about stored in an artifact tree so that in future we may use and we can deliver again. That is what we can call as a artifacts, execute packages. What is the delivery? Handling the product to the client. What is the reply? Installing the product in the client machine. This is what we can call it as a key terminals of a Jenkins. Now, for example, if I want to perform the installation of the Jenkins, what is the requirement and what are the tools I'm just going to install? So in this particular step, I'm just going to install Jenkins first. And after that, I'm just going to install Maven. I'm just going to install Tomcat server. Okay. So first we'll see with this. Uh, before that, I would like to install Git. Okay. Jenkins, Maven, Tomcat, Git. These are the four tools I'm just going to install right now. For example, if I would like to install Jenkins or Maven, what is the prerequisites? If I just would like to install uh, Jenkins and Maven, go to here and let me make a note on all these things. If I already install Jenkins, what is the prerequisites? So we require Java. If I want to install Maven, I want I just need to install Java because all these tools are working on the Java platform. All these tools are working on the Java platform. So along with what we required, Git we required, and also what we required, we required Tomcat. Okay. So, so in the next class, I will show you that how to install Nexus, how to install Sonar Keep. If the time permits, I'll show you right now. Otherwise, we'll discuss later. So these are the two four tools which I'm just going to install right now. Understand very clearly how to install all the tools. Very important. I'll just go to the Google first. First, I want to install Java. First, I want to install Java because Jenkins, Maven, all the tools are working on the Java platform. Before, I'm just going to hands-on experience. Anyone have any questions right now? Anyone have any questions right now? It's a clear. Okay, fine. We don't require to learn any programming language. You want to become a DevOps engineer. We have to learn only about scripting part. Okay, yes. We can see that. Look at my screen carefully. It will just go down. This is the flow which I'm just going to explain right now. And also, Somebody have a questions that uh, is Jenkins is open source or not? Jenkins is open source. And also, why we have to go with only the Jenkins? There are some other tools also available in the market for the CI CD process. CI CD process. There are some other tools are available in the market. That is all about, uh, we have a circle CI. So we have a team city. Okay. So these are the some of the tools available in the market to create the CI CD pipelines. But Compared to all the tools, Jenkins is very popular. So why it is very popular? Let's see that. It has so many plugins. You can write your own plugin. We can use community plugins. A plugin is either anything but a piece of software. Plugin is all about a piece of software, which is going to be installed on the Jenkins. That software we can able to use in Jenkins here. For example, if I want to integrate Maven, if I want to integrate Git, if I want to integrate Tomcat server, Definitely, I need to install plugins. Without plugins, we cannot able to do anything. And also, one note, quick note: Jenkins is not a tool; it is a framework. Okay, it is a framework 
you can do whatever you want uh, all you need to be plugins we can in, we can integrate docker we can integrate kubernetes we can integrate git we can integrate uh, maven we can integrate nexus we can integrate sonarchy so whatever it may be what are the tool you required we can integrate all the tools with the jenkins we can do the automation with help of the jenkins okay yes let's move on yes i will take all the questions we'll just wait a minute let's focus on the hands on experience once it is done i will take all your questions yes thank you very much let's move on the first i would like to install java so how to install java just go to your uh, google and type here java 11 i'm just going to install java i'm going to say 11 version so let's say for example jdk the two kind of javas we have one is the jdk one is the jre jdk stands for java development kit jre stands for java runtime environment okay i'm just going to explain here java jdk 11 download go to all jdk 11 download go to here jdk 11 download for windows go to your techspot.com go to techspot.com and if you'll just go to here which which is your windows operating system right click on the windows this is going to be installed click on the continue to download my java package is going to be download what is the extension it is dot exe file dot exe file it will start downloading just it is a waiting for the api response we'll just wait a minute now it is downloading we'll just wait a minute so meanwhile it will download then what it required i would like to install maven right so just go to the google type uh, maven download maven download go to the google and type maven download go to his official website official website for the maven is maven.apache.org go to here download maven here i'm just going to download this particular zip file so apache hyphen maven hyphen 3.9.0 hyphen bin dot zip here click on this it is going to download the folder it will just go to here this particular file the site can't be reached fine and go again and go to the website called as a java down, jdk download level we can go to oracle we can go to oracle or you can go to any website and we can download whatever it may be it will just go to my oracle and here you can able to see that uh, which uh, which version you want to install java yes java sc development kit 11.0.7 if you click on this windows platform it is going to be download we can see that it is for linux it is also linux for mac operating system solaris windows 64 bit we can just click on it it is going to be downloaded okay so i don't want to download because it's already downloaded in my local laptop we can see that it is downloading also Maven is downloaded. Then what we required? We required Git, right? So we'll just go to the new tab and try to Git download. I'm just uh, setting up my infrastructure first before doing automation. Go to here, Git download. This is official website, https colon git-scm.com and click on the downloads hyphen git. When I click on the downloads hyphen git here, click on the windows. This particular uh, is going to be downloaded here. Which is your operating system? my operating system is 64-bit operating system so how we'll get to know that if we'll go to my computer at this pc right click go to your show properties we can able to see that right click and properties here i can able to see that properties which is operating system it is 64-bit operating system okay that's fine and just go to here click on the 64-bit for windows setup click on this so what i'm just doing i'm downloading apache I'm downloading JDK. I'm just downloading Git. All these tools I'm just going to be downloaded. Now, what is the tool we required? We required Jenkins also, right? Go to the website, website type here Jenkins download. Go to here, Jenkins download. And the Jenkins download and deployment, click on it. When you click on this Jenkins download and deployment, it will just go down. We can see that download Jenkins 2.3.7.53 version. We have to always go for LTS. LTS stands for uh, you know long-term support. Long-term support. 
we should not go to the religious for the weekly basis. Go to your LTS, long-term support. If we'll just come to here, we can see that there is a hardware and software requirements. Okay. If we just click on hardware and software requirements, and here, what is the prerequisites uh, required when I want to install Jenkins on my laptop? This is the prerequisites. The minimum 50 GB of RAM required, and also we require one GB of drive space. We will just recommendation hardware configuration for small team, 4 GB of RAM, 50 GB plus hardware drive space. And also we need, we need to install Java, right? Which version we require Java version, you have to know about that. If we'll go to Java requirements, if we'll go to Java requirements and we can able to see that we require Java 11 or uh, that means the Jenkins required Java 11 or 17. We require Java 11 or 17. See, before installing any server, you should know about what is the system requirements. If you'll go to interview, they lost small, small basic questions. For example, if you'll go to interview, they will ask what is the minimum RAM required when I want to install Jenkins on my Windows laptop. That's what the question they're going to ask. You have to, you have to in a capable to answer your question. That is, we required a 250 GB of RAM minimum. And we, if case, if we require 4 GB, that would be fine. We can see that we required Java 11 version of Java. Okay, that's fine. Now, we have seen all the requirements now. So how can we download my Jenkins? If we'll just go back one step, we can see that download Jenkins 2.3.75.3 LTS. Here we can able to see that we are down. We are just, if you want to download dot war file, click on download it directly or else go to the windows. So click on the windows here. It is going to download dot msc files. You can see that this downloading dot msc file. Okay. So we have installed, uh, we just downloaded git and maven, all these things. So meanwhile, uh, once it is got downloaded, meanwhile, we'll install the Git and we'll install the Apache Maven. Okay. I can see supply of questions on my, okay, fine. Uh, what I have done uh, so far is all about downloading all the tools. I have downloaded JDK, I have downloading Git, Downloading like you know Jenkins, downloading Apache Maven. What other tool I required? I require Tomcat server, right? Just go to here, type Tomcat download. If you'll go to here, click on the Tomcat download, click on Apache Tomcat 9 software download, just go down. And here I just going to download 34 bit or 64 bit Windows service installer. Click on it. We can see that we're installing .exe file, Apache Tomcat. Clear this part, everyone, how to download all the tools. Very simple, nothing great. Yes. Yes, I already installed all the tools. I installed all the tools before come to workshop. Because if you start from the middle of the installation, you know, if you start the middle of the installation, nobody cannot understand because we are getting mixed kind of group. Some BD will looking for a job. Some is already college passed out. Students are there. Somebody a working professionals are there. Somebody don't know about Git. Somebody don't know about Git. Uh, somebody don't know about Maven. Somebody don't know about Tomcat server. So if you show the installation process, then only we can able to understand how to set up the infrastructure and how we're going to deploy the application to your Tomcat server. That is the reason only I'm just installing all the tools. It will not take much time. It will take another 10 minutes. After that, I will show you that how you're going to automate the application. Very simple. That. Okay. Yes. 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 Fine. Let's move on. Let's leave. Let's move on. Uh, I'm just going to install Tomcat server first. Go to your downloads folder. Just go to your downloads folder. And after that, go to downloads. I'm just going to install Tomcat first. Click on double click on this one. Yes. Click on yes. And after that, click on next. For Java also, we require to install. For Tomcat also, we need to install Java, guys. That is also which we need to understand. Go to here and click on the next here. Here, we have to understand very careful that on which port number my my software has to run. My Tomcat server is going to run on by default port number 8080. 
in case if you would like to change the port number yes we can change the port number and also i would like to provide the username and password let's say for example i'm just going to provide my admin is username and also i'm just going to provide admin is my password now click on the next here and he by default is going to take the my java path where did i install my java click on the next and click on the install it we can see that i'm installing tomcat server yes click on the finish the tomcat server has installed successfully now we'll discuss we'll we'll see how to install git okay git, git is also downloaded now go to your downloads here we can see git also downloaded i'm just going to double click on the inspector git.exe file double click on the inspector git.exe file is going to open the step by step process just go to click on yes and after that what we are doing is nothing but click on the next here and if I need to find the location where I would have to install Git and click on yes and next here and next, next. I'm installing Git on my Windows platform. Okay. I installed Tomcat server. I installed Git. Now I'm just going to install JDK. Let's move on. Yes. Go to here, open the JDK file, open JDK file, and we get here you can able to see that I'm installing JDK hyphen 11.0.8. Click on S, click on S here. See another join installation is in process. You must complete the installation before you can do it. We can see that. Click on the next one and click on the next. It is started installing Java. It is started installing. Java. If you just go to the Google and uh, open the new browser, check whether Tomcat server is working or not. Type the command called localhost colon 8080. Hit the enter here. Check that are you able to access your Tomcat server? Yes, I can able to access my Tomcat server. When I click on the manager app, and here I need to provide my password is admin, user is name is admin, the password also admin, click on the sign in here. We can able to see that my Tomcat web application manager I can able to access. Yes, that's fine. Now check this. Uh, let's, uh, we install the Git here. Click on the finish. When you click on the fish finish, we can able to see that Git was successfully installed. If you go to search, if you type the Git here, we can able to see the Git bash. If you'll open the Git bash, uh, I can able to find out the git bash here. That means uh, I have successfully installed git. Go to the command prompt. Go to command prompt, cmd. And here we can able to check that uh, whether it is got installed or not. Type the hyphen git hyphen version. We can see that. So we have installed git 2.39.1 version. We have installed git. And we start install Tomcat server. Now I'm installing which one? The Java. I think Java also finished. Successfully got installed. For Java, we need to set up the path. So how do you set up the path? Go to your uh, C drive. Go to your program files. And here I would like to go to my uh, go to my Java folder. So inside the Java, we have a Java 1.8 and one Java 11 version. Go with JDK 11 version, copy the specter path. Now go to your search and go to settings. Go to settings here. And I'm just going to the settings. Go to the environment. It will go to environment variable. And here I will just go to the environment variable here. And here actually we need to set up the path. See that it will just uh, Java underscore home and mention the path over here. I get, this was user variable and system variable. In user variable, we have to click on the new and we have to provide the name of the variable. Let's say, for example, Java underscore home and provide the path, whatever you have copied and click on OK. And also we have to set the path in a system variable also. Click on the new and provide the same thing, Java underscore home and provide the variable name. That's fine. Now go to your uh, path over here. Path. Click on the edit. When you click on the edit, uh, actually go to your uh, Java folder. 
open the bin folder and copy this up to here. So why? Because you, you, whenever you're going to execute any Java program, it is going to compile the Java program, right? So here the library files available. That's the reason only I'm just going to provide the bin folder. Just go to here, click paste the bin folder and click on work it. I already saved this particular path, so I'm not going to save. Now click on the cancel it. Yes. Now if you just go to your command prompt, just type the command called uh, Java hyphen version. I can check that which kind of version I installed. We can see that Java len version I have installed. We'll just type the command called echo and percentage. Let's say for example, if I just provide Java underscore home, I should get this path. Then only it has successfully set the path. We can see that the path is successfully set. Now we installed Jenkins, uh, we installed the Tomcat server, we installed Git, we installed Java. Now what I will right now, I want to install Apache Maven, right? Maven is the build tool. As per discussion, go to the downloads and copy this particular folder. And I have to go to this uh, C drive first. Control new. Okay. And go to your uh, C drive and go just go to the C drive and go to the program files. Here we need to create a folder called as a Maven folder. We are not going to install it Maven actually. We're going to set up the path. That's it. Go to your uh, folder. And here actually we need to extract the files. Now just go to here, downloads, which version I downloaded 3.9.0, right? Now go to here and uh, delete this particular folder, whatever it is there. Click on the delete. Yes, click on the continue it. We can see that it's got deleted. Now I'm just going to extract all the files inside my Maven folder. Right click and go to here, extract all and just choose the folder where you want to extract. Click on the browse, go to the Windows machine. Now go to your program files, go to your Maven folder. And actually here, I'm just going to extract all the files. Click on extract, click on the continue. Once you just click on the continue, we can able to see that I'm just going to extract all the files into my Maven folder. Yeah, meanwhile, I'll just look at the questions box. Yes. And Tomcat's like a jump. Okay. Port name or 8080. Are you from East Goda or NSR? Already applied. Do you need to set up any environment variable for installation? For Java, we need to set the environment variable. For Maven, we need to set the environment variable. For the Git, we don't require. For Jenkins, we don't require. Okay. Which version of Java it will be installed? Uh, Java learn version. As I showed that Jenkins is going to support 2.3.7 version going to support only Java 11 version. So did you find any vacancies for DevOps session? We can automate the session. Oh, is it too high level? Okay, fine. And just go to here, it's extracting all the files. A Tomcat is application server, uh, which we can able to deploy all the applications inside the servers. Okay, that is what. They extract all the files. Now go to my C drive and go to your C drive. We can see that we have just uh, extract all the files. Open the folder and copy the path. We'll just copy the path. Go to your environment variable settings. Where is my environment variables? Again, go to the settings here. Type the environment and uh, ENVI and click on it. And go to your uh, environment variables and go to here. Maven underscore path. It is. I'm just going to delete this one. I'm just going to click on new one. Just type uh, Maven underscore uh, home and provide the variable name. Control V. Click on OK. You can see that. And just to go to here, Maven underscore home. Click on the delete. And new one. Provide the Maven underscore home and provide the variable value. Click on OK. We have set the path. Now what I would like to do, I want to set the, I want to set a path also. Go to your path, click on the edit. We can able to set new one. Just read this particular old one. I'll just go to the folder, open this folder and go to your uh, pin folder and copy it. And just go to here and provide this particular new and just control V and click on OK. Check the my Maven path. Just give me a second. I'll just go to the bin for go to the bin. Yes. Here actually, this is the path which I need to provide. 
give me one second and click on here click on the edit and remove this control v okay that's fine go to the click on the edit and provide this path just click on okay and go to your command prompt just type the command called mvn hyphen version and just hit the enter it see mvn is not a recognized command just type the command called mvn hyphen hyphen version and hit the enter see that why it is not able to recognize the command because you not the set you have not set the path correctly that's the reason only it is unable to recognize the mvn command just go to your path here and check actually what exactly have done it yes yes we can edit that is for the choice that's fine okay now go again the command prompt and check this for this command mvn hyphen version see that java underscore home environment variable is not defined correctly and a variable needed to run this particular program just type the command again java hyphen hyphen version we can see that java underscore environment variable is not defined correctly just go to your uh, go to your environment variables file where is my just hear it go to the environment variables and check the java path go to the maven path here yes and check this one go to here click on the edit click on the edit now i'll just go to the program files go to the java java 11 jdk 11 and go to here and copy the path and paste it. Now click on OK and go to here again and just uh, check this command Java hyphen so Java hyphen version is fine. It is recognizing. The problem with the Maven now. Just go to your uh, program files. Go to the Maven folder. Go to Apache hyphen Maven. Copy this and go to your environment variables go to your maven underscore click on the delete and go to your new one just type maven underscore home and provide the variable value click on ok go to here as well I delete this click on the new and provide maven underscore home and provide the variable value click on ok now just go to your path and uh, click on the edit yes click on the delete one and just provide again yes copy this i can see couple of questions here Just give a second. Just give a second. The new verse. Just control V and click on OK. We can see that. So Java underscore home. Here the variable you name Java underscore home. It is correct. Here actually we have given one zero point one seven. Here we just given eleven version. That is actually the people are saying about it. Just go to the program files. Go to the Java and open java 11.11 .11 and copy it set the both okay both is same should be the same and here also go to your java underscore home click on it say provide the same path yes now click on ok it click on ok now just uh, close this command prompt and open the command prompt again command prompt just type the command called java hyphen version i can able to find the java version and just type the command called mvn hyphen version as well we can see that we successfully installed uh, maven java now i would like to install jenkins it will just go to your download folder jenkins also downloaded we can see that jenkins.ms file windows install package got downloaded now double click on inspector jenkins here 
double click on Jenkins, click on the next and see program file Jenkins. Now go to click on the next here. And here actually here we have to select a run as a service, run service as a, and click on the next here. And already Jenkins will run on the default port number 8080, but I would like to run my Jenkins on port number 8090. Click on the test port number. Check this, my port is working right now. Click on the next. And by default, Jenkins will take this Java path. Look at my screen carefully. It is going to take the path called C program files Java or also JDK hyphen 11. Now click on the next and click on the next here and click on the install. Jenkins is going to be installed on my local machine. We can see 2.3.7.3. It is successfully got finished. If you'll go to your Google browser, if you'll just go to your Google and open the new browser. Yes, open the browser and go to your new tab. Wherever you install the Jenkins, if you install Mac operating system, you installed with Linux operating system, we're always accessing your Jenkins to the local browser. I mean to say in the browser only. Type the command called localhost colon 8090 and hit the enter it. We just see that whether you can able to access my Jenkins server or not. Please wait while Jenkins is getting ready to work. Ready to work. We just need to wait for some time. My Jenkins server is loading. So once we just complete all the installation plugin, all these things, I will show you that how to automate the process. Okay. It will take another couple of minutes. Just bear with me guys. Okay. Jenkins, we can install Docker. Yes, we can able to pull the Docker image and we can able to assign the port numbers and we can able to access through the web browser. Yes, that is also possible. We can also install with the Windows, you know, command prompt also. We can also install through the Tomcat also because whatever the war file which we have, that we're going to down, we are going to download and with the web apps folder and we can able to access the other server through the web browser also. Yes, there are many ways we can able to access the install the Jenkins server. Okay. Simply best host panelist. Uh, Okay, Maven, see that um, it is got, uh, go to here, unlock the Jenkins. If we'll just go to the Spectre path, I got my password. Initially, admin is going to provide the password. Go to here, open the notepad, click on the just one and copy this password here. Copy this password and go to your Jenkins and provide administrator password and click on the continue it. When I click on the continue, it is going to ask you that to install size plugins. Jenkins is all about plugins. Click on install size plugins here. Yes, it is getting started. It will take few minutes to install all the plugins. I think somebody is having a you know doubt about a Maven how to set the path, right? Go to your folder where you extracted all the files. For example, I have just go to the Windows C and go to the Maven. Let's say I will just go to the program files here. Inside that, I have created a folder called as a Maven. You can extract wherever you want. You can extract in the D drive. You can extract in the E drive. You want to extract in the desktop. You want to extract in the downloads folder. Wherever you want to extract, we can extract all these things. You know, it doesn't matter that you want to extract only in the C drive. Go to your Maven folder. If you go to Maven folder here, I can able to see that open the Apache hyphen Maven hyphen 3.90 and copy the specter path. A copy the specter path and go to your environment variables. Just go to your settings here and type the env environment variable and add the environment variable here and go to the environment variables and here in the system variables and user variables, we have to set the path. Click on the new, give the name whatever you want and provide the path whatever you have copied it. The same thing you have to do it in my system variable also. And the last step is all about, we have to set the path. Go to the path folder, click on the edit and go to your Maven folder and open the bin folder and copy this after that we can able to paste the path over here. That is how we can set the Marvin over here. Okay, understood clearly. So for anyone have any questions, uh, set up your, uh, all the tools on your Windows platform. Anyone have any questions?
Gradle and also build tools only. But if you go to Gradle and Ant, so both are some complications are there. That's the reason only I will just everyone using nowadays Maven. Yes. Jenkins password they will provide in the by default. Uh, we can able to copy this formed XML file. It is all about project object model. The software development team they're going to write a formed XML file. They are defined all the dependencies, all the plugins in the formed XML file. Based on the formed XML file only, we are going to do the build activity. Without formed XML file, we cannot able to build any kind of project. Okay. Check that my installation process is going on or not. It is doing. Yes. Don't worry, guys. This session is going to be uploaded in the YouTube. You can able to watch over there. Yes. There is a Docker. Kubernetes certification classes are going to be start from 7 a.m. IST tomorrow. I'm going to say Monday session. There you can catch up me. I'm going to give the demo on what is the Docker, what is the Kubernetes, and why do you have to go to Kubernetes, what is certification we have, and why do you go for certifications? Because we are starting a new batch about Docker and Kubernetes. If anyone would like to do certification on the Kubernetes, please contact the admin team. They'll provide the demo session link. We can attend tomorrow's session. We can learn what is Docker, what is the Kubernetes, what are the different kind of certifications we have, and why do you go for the certification, all the details, okay? Sayed, I hope you understood. Yes. And just go to here. Uh, I will just go to the diagram. Somebody has, this is what exactly we have done, right? This loading, just wait a minute. So we have installed Git. We installed Maven. We installed Jenkins. We installed Tomcat. And also we have installed Java. Okay, let's move on. Check my Jenkins, whether installed or not, all the plugins, it will be installed. Yes. It will wait, as it take it a few minutes. So meanwhile, I will take the questions. Anyone have any questions, you can raise your hands so that uh, I will take the questions in interactive mode. Yes. Yes, the off batch also going on. There is a batch is going on 732, 730 to 8, uh, 7 to 8.30 p.m. Uh, I'm at DevOps trainer and certification trainer on Kubernetes and Docker and GCP training. So I'm taking care of uh, AWS DevOps. I'm taking care of Docker and Kubernetes certification as well. Okay, it is, I will just write. And also we're going to teach you about the GCP DevOps as well. If anyone would like to learn all this one, all the things, just contact to my admin team. They will give you slots uh, when I'm just going to start AWS DevOps team. So this batch is going to be complete by the other couple of weeks. So for example, it will complete by third week of February. That is AWS DevOps batch. After that, we're going to start the new batch. The two, Docker and Kubernetes session, we're going to start tomorrow. So there is a demo at 7 a.m. IST. If anyone would like to do certification on Docker and Kubernetes, feel free to join in the demo session. Yes. If we take Docker and Kubernetes, uh, it will the total duration is 60 hours. Uh, every day we have one hour session. Every day we have one hour session. If we go to AWS DevOps, it is a three months of duration it is. Every day we have one and a half hours. There we are going to learn a lot in the DevOps, AWS DevOps, all these things. So this is DevOps still we have not yet started the batch. So they will announce soon that uh, we're going to start a GCP DevOps batch. Okay. I can see so many ri hands rising. Let me uh, take the questions. Okay. Go to here and uh, good attendance. I can see some of the hands rising. So I'll just go with first uh, Dilip. Yes, Dilip, can you able to unmute yourself? 
Ajay, any questions do you have? Ajay. Sir, myself, Ajay, sir. Yes, Ajay. Go ahead. So I have a long gap, sir. Can I survive this in this course? If anyone passed out uh, 2015, 2014, they can able to survive. I'm not so sure about you passed out 2013. Total. I don't want to give false promises. If in okay. case, if you passed out 2014 and 2015, Yes, we can able to survive. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. Dilip. Mm, I'll just go with the uh, Mani Ratnam. Yes. Hello? Yes, please. Uh, what is the big MSA? Uh, sorry, Jingis your voice is very low. Yeah, what is Jingis MSA you have done? Which you have done? Your question is not clear, first of all. You just uh, talk a bit, a bit louder, nothing will happen. Okay, yes. What is Jenkins MSA file? Okay, you have done it. Yes, if I just go to your uh, downloads folder. See that when you want to install the Jenkins on the Windows platform, I have downloaded this downloads, right? If we'll go to hit the downloads, we can able to see that Windows installer package. Okay. Uh, see that we have done with the installation part. We can create a username. So I'm just going to create a username called as admin. The password also admin. I'm going to provide admin password is admin. And just go down, provide the full name is Murli Mohan, provide the email address is Murli Social123, and click on the save and continue it. We can see that I can able to access my Tomcat server through local host called 8090. Click on save and finish. My Jenkins is ready. Click on the start using Jenkins. Click on start using Jenkins. This is my Jenkins dashboard, guys. When you want to automate any particular pipeline, first we have to go to the manage Jenkins. We have to go to manage Jenkins. After that, we have to go to the manage plugins. So here actually, we need to install all the plugins, whatever required. See, for example, you want to do Maven projects. We have to go to the type the Maven here and we have to install the Maven projects. If we'll just go to here, we can able to see there is a Maven invoker. There is a, there is a plugin, we got it Maven invoker. And just go to here and check the Maven invoker and just go up. We have another plugin called as Maven integrations. Just click on install without restart. So I'm installing all the plugins, whatever I required. So for example, if I want to deploy the application to Tomcat server, I must install that plugin called as a deploy to container. If we'll go to manage Jenkins, manage plugins, and here we just go to install, you know, available plugins over here, go to available plugins and just type the deploy to container. So deploy to a container. It is the plugin which I need to install. Click on install without restart. Click on install without restart and just go down here. I can see that uh, my installation is going to be happening. The particular plugin is going to be installed. So it will be installed all the plugins. Without install the plugins, we can't able to perform the automation. Listen carefully. Without install all the plugins, we cannot able to do any activity in this Jenkins. Everything is plug and play. I check the status of the plugin. It is installing. It will take some time. So it has got installed loading exchange plugin session. Deployed to is uh, pending here. Yes. It is installing. Yes. Mm -hmm. 2018, right? So yes, you can able to get it. Yes, Raja, 2018, right? Passed out, you can able to get it. We can see that deploy to container, the installing, the plugin is installing. If I'll just go to my dashboard, if we'll go to dashboard, go to manage Jenkins. If we'll go to your global configurations, 
we have to configure all the tools with the Jenkins. We have to configure all the tools with the Jenkins. If we'll go to here, first we need to install JDK. Just click on the add JDK here. Um, provide the name. We can provide any name to you over here because whenever you want to do build activity for the Java projects, we must install Java on the Jenkins. I'm just going to provide Java underscore home. If we'll go to install automatically, if we'll go to install automatically, so we don't have any, get, we have get option to provide your username and password. But uh, here I'm just going to provide my path where I installed my Jenkins. I will just go to here and copy the JDK path and provide the Java home directory. If I'll just go down, we can see that when installed Git direct automatically, it is going to identify Git.exe file in the local mission. We'll just go down. We are not using Gradle or we are not using Ant as of now. We're using Maven for the build activity. If we go to click on add Maven, provide the name of the Mavens here. So I'm just going to provide the Maven 3.9.0 is the version. And we can see that which version you're installing automatically. I'm installing the version called as a 3.9.0 version. If we click on the drop down list, we have 3.8.7, 3.8.6, 3.8.5, 3.8.4, 3.83, you know, different kind of versions we have. In this particular version, I'm just going to install 3.9.0. Now click on apply and click on save. That means I've just uh, successfully saved my pipeline. I mean, I successfully configured all the tools. If you'll just go to tool configuration, I configured Java, I configured Git, I configured Maven. Now, if we'll go to manage Jenkins, if we'll go to manage Jenkins, let's say I have some projects on my GitHub repositories. I'm going to do this factor, GitHub repositories. Go to here. I'm just going to log into your github.com and hit the enter here. If we we'll just go to the hit enter, I will just go to my repositories. Some of the projects are available on my GitHub repository. Let's say, for example, I'm just going to take the Hello World application and copy, go to the copy code, provide the URL. So already some projects are available on my GitHub repository. I'm going to take the code from my GitHub repository here. You want to create a CACD pipeline. First, we have to go to the click on the new item. Provide the click on the new item provide the pipeline here. See, I'm just going to uh, provide here a demo pipeline. Demo hyphen pipeline is nothing but a, in name of the my pipeline. Go to here, click on the Maven projects or click on the facial project. First, we'll see about facial project. Now click on OK. And if you look at my screen carefully, so these are the steps which we need to follow to create a say city pipeline. Whatever you can able to see, it is all about my, it is all about my Jenkins configuration phase. So what is my source code management? So where my source code is available, go to your source code management tool, go to the Git here. I'm just going to provide a Git repository URL and hit the enter it. We can see that I have provided my Git repository or where my code is available. Below that we can able to see credentials here. We don't require any credentials if the repository is public repository. If you'll go to my GitHub repository, if it is a public repository, we don't require any credentials. If the private repository then only we require credentials over here. And just go to the build, trig build triggers. So I want to start my job automatically. So I'll just go to your build periodically. I mean to say, after two minutes, my job has to start. I'll just go to here, provide two, start, start. Don't worry all these things. If you'll go to build steps, I would like to build the activity. I mean to say, I want to convert the source code into executable packages. How we can do this? Go to the build steps. And here we can able to see invoke top level Maven targets. We have to use the two commands, guys. There is a two commands which we can use to build activity, MVN, clean package. So it is a command which is going to use to convert your source code into execute packages. So I'll just go to here, type Maven 3.90, goals here, just provide clean package. Provide clean package is a goal. It's going to convert your source code into a package. Now, what are the package I have generated? That package I would like to deploy into where Tomcat server, right? Go to your post build actions. Here we have to get there is option called as deploy war or ERP container. So when it when you install the plugin called as deploy to container, then only we can able to install this plug. When able, then only we can able to get this option called as a deploy war or ERP container. Just go to the option here. See here we just need to provide the path where is the war file is available. Just go to here, click on the enter. Now, after that, we need to provide the containers. In the containers, if you look at carefully, I have different kind of servers we have. We have a Glassfish, JBoss, 
Apache Tomcat, all the servers, right? Which is server I have installed? I installed server called a Tomcat 9.x remotely. Go to here. And the Tomcat credentials we need to provide. I don't have any credentials. Click on the add. Click on the Jenkins. So I'm just going to provide my username is admin. And uh, password also admin I'm just going to provide. And after that provide the ID. It is nothing but Tomcat. Okay. Tomcat. Description is all about Tomcat credentials. Now click on add. So I have added my credentials. Go to here. Click on the add Tomcat credentials. So it is going to be automatically get this particular credentials where do automate the things. So before that, we have to do one particular activity. Go to your C drive, wherever you have configured Tomcat server. Go to your window C. Go to your program files. Go to your Apache Tomcat soft foundation. Go to Tomcat 9.0. Click on the continue. There is a file called the configuration file. If we'll go to configuration file, we got Tomcat users uh, .xml file. I would like to open this factor file. Open this file. And I would like to drag and drop my XML file. I see so many questions on the chat box. No problem, guys. Try to look at my screen what I'm just doing. After that, I will answer all the questions. If you open this Tomcat credential, Tomcat hyphen user server XML file, here actually we need to use the whenever you want to deploy automated process, we have to add the line called as a here space manager hyphen script manager hyphen script we have to add the line and after that just give a space and provide your password okay now just go to here click on the save save the file go to here click on the save the changes has been saved now i can able to deploy this waterfall into my tomcat server just go to here and uh, go to your tomcat url i mean to say wherever you install your tomcat your that url you have to provide go to apache tomcat so just provide the URL, local host colon 8080 and just expand it and just go to your Tomcat server and just come down and go to your Tomcat URL. So what I would like to do is nothing but I will just go to here. I will just go to click on apply and save. When I click on apply and save, after two minutes, uh, this CICD pipeline automatically going to be triggered. Automatically it's going to be triggered because I set the timer over there. I set the timer over there. So because of that reason, it's going to trigger automatically the trigger. Just go to here. I will just check. Uh... That's fine. Uh, sometimes we get uh, this kind of people. That's fine. They will here to waste our, they are here to disturb all the session. No problem. We'll just continue it. Okay. Santu, don't wait, don't disturb the session. If you don't, uh, you know, do you don't want to continue, please uh, leave the session. Okay. Other so many interested candidates are there. They try to learn something from this uh, workshop. We don't bother about you. Yes. This kind of people will be there in the society. Their job is to disturb others. They're not here to learn something, you know, all these things. Yes. If you just go to here, I look at my screen carefully. So the job is going to trigger automatically after two minutes. So if you just click on the build now, it will just go to here. We can see that it is it is deploying all the activity. If we'll go to if we'll go to build number, if we'll go to console output, I can see that my Jenkins is automatically fetching all the activities. It is doing all the workspace. I'm mean going to say what are the project is they having. I have given the GitHub URL. It is pulling the source code from where into my workspace. And after that, it's cloning the project into my workspace. After it's going to convert my source code into package. It will just come down here. Look at here. From here, it started the build activity. I'm mean going to say what are the source code we have given. The source code is going to be converted into executable packages. Come down here. And I can able to see that. We can even see that there is a war file got generated here. Is this we got the build success? That means my war file got generated. What is a war file? If you go to C program data, 
Jenkins dot Jenkins workspace demo hyphen pipeline. If you'll go to this particular uh, demo pipeline folder. So Jenkins, what it will do is, is all about. It is going to clone the project into workspace. And it is going to clone the project into workspace. After that, it's going to convert your code into Excel packages. I'll show you that. If you'll go to folder, I will just go to your folder and control V and hit the enter it. If you'll go to here, we can able to see that. Go to web app folder, go to target folder. It is converted my source code into dot var file look at my screen carefully it is created it is converted my application source code into war file now where is my application deployed application deployed wait inside my tomcat server we can able to see that the build is a success he successfully builded my dot war file this application we deployed where inside the tomcat server go to here container to tomcat 9.x remote with the content null we can see deploy that war file into my Tomcat server finish success. Go to your Tomcat server now. Go to your Tomcat server. Go to here and click on the refresh. When you click on the refresh, we can able to see that web app fold, web app war file, right? If you click on the web app for a web app app, I can able to see my application got successfully got deployed into my application Tomcat server. So this is the how we're going to automate the deployment process. This is what we can call as a CA CD process, continuous integration and continuous deployment. We can create for any kind of project. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, fine. So let's, I think, I hope you guys understood about what is the CACD process, how we can able to automate uh, this deployment process with the Jenkins, right? We created a CACD pipeline that way we can able to get the source code from a GitHub repository and we can do the build activity and I can able to deploy the application into my Tomcat server. This is a simple pipeline which I just created. Okay. Yes. What are the applications you're going to store? All the applications are going to be stored in the Tomcat web apps folder. If you'll go to Windows C drive, go to your program files, go to your Apache software foundation, go to Tomcat. So go to web apps folder. We are storing all your dot four files over here only in your Tomcat web server web apps folder. If it is not going to deploy the war file here, we can't able to access application through the Tomcat server. So it is all about today's guys. I will just show you another application. I'll just go to here. I'll just go to my I'll just go, go back and this, I'm just going to take the application called my application. I'll just show you one, another simple pipeline. Go to your code, copy it, go to the Jenkins, look at my screen carefully. I'm just going to create other pipeline here. Go to dashboard and go to the new item and provide here a demo hyphen Maven. Okay. When you want to do Maven projects, we should have the found XML file and just go to click on OK here. So I'm just going to provide my source code, go to source code management, go to the Git, provide the Git repository URL and go to your uh, build step. If we'll go to build step, we can see that automatically is going to find found the found XML file. If you look at my GitHub repository carefully, the file it is available on my GitHub repository. Just we check here. We can able to see found XML file. Yes, it is there. I will just go to here, provide the goals. We should not mention MVN because it will, it will know that what exactly you're doing, clean package. And I'll just go to here, post build actions and uh, go to here and cut the deploy water to container and just provide the various your dot war file path dynamically. And after that, just come down, set the container Tomcat 9X. Okay. And credentials is all about Tomcat credentials. Provide the Tomcat URL. I will just go to here, Tomcat localhost colon 8080, copy this Tomcat URL and provide in this automation. Pipeline and uh, Tomcat URL and click on apply and save. When you click on the build now, it is going to start the build activity here. I will just go to here. It is going to generate the build number. Go to here and go to your console output where I can see all the output guys. We can see Jenkins is automatically doing all the activities. It is installing all the packages, whatever we required to build this particular project. See that it is started doing uh, 
editing the fun XML file. It is converting the water file. Compiler 3.30. We can see that we got failure, right? We got failures. We got build success, but it is unable to be unable to deploy the Spectre war file into my Jenkins server. So why? Because go to your pipeline, check the pipeline, what exactly is happening. Go to your configure. If we'll go to configure, if we'll just go to your uh, post build actions, here actually we have just copied double quotes. That's the reason only it has got failed. Click on save, apply and save. Go to click on the build now again. We get this second time it started build activity. We got build number two. Go to your console output. I can check this. That is deploying my application into my Tomcat server. Yes, we got build success. We got build success. Where is my war file? It is in this vector location. It. So where is my up deployed application? The Tomcat server. If we'll just go to your Tomcat server, and if we'll go to here, and click on back button, and just click on the refresh, refresh here. Go to web app, Maven app application, and here I can able to see that I can deploy the application over here. Okay. So that is how we can deploy the application into your Tomcat server. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope somewhat it is going to be help you a lot. The session, how to do automation and the next workshop, we'll see that uh, how we can able to uh, integrate Sonar Cube, how to integrate Nexus, how to check the code quality, how to push the artifact into your Tomcat server. Okay. Yes. Thank you guys. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. Um, if anyone would like to join for the Docker and Kubernetes session, certification classes will be there from tomorrow. So we have Docker and Kubernetes. Kubernetes certification classes daily one hour we have classes 60 hours duration and it is going to be like uh, the fee will be like a 14000 the fee if you do we are going to teach you the certification for cka and uh, ckad this is a certification level which we are going to teach you guys if anyone would need more information about certification course contact my admin team They'll provide all the details and demo link also. Yes. Thank you very much. They'll let you know when is your Jenkins workshop. Yes. Dharmavaram Polytechnic students, any, anyone is there still in the meeting? My admin team contact number, I'm just going to display over here. Yes. My admin team contact number will be, my admin team contact number, it will be 98. Give me one second. I'll just give other number. Admin contact number is, uh, this is admin contact number. If anyone would interested, please go ahead and contact him. Uh, it is like 98494 Yes.
ஹரிபிரசாத் எஸ் okay thank you guys thank you very much thank you very much for your time uh, i think some of uh, you participants would like to talk with me yes uh, subodh go ahead your question hello sir we will get a video recording of the session sir yes yes you can check in the youtube link of naresh it okay you'll get it okay sir next we'll go with uh, mani ratnam yeah my question is also same sir so where can i get this recorded recording video yeah youtube yes yes okay next we'll go with uh, arun kumar yes arun kumar sir without uh, this uh, jenkins and uh, this any knowledge can we learn the docker and kubernetes with the jenkins only we can able to automate uh, you know docker and kubernetes deployments docker also is going to used for build activity i am just i can able to convert my application to docker images that for docker images i am going to depend on kubernetes plan okay? okay simple words thank you thank you sir yeah ibrahim yeah hi uh, hi murli how are you hi ibrahim yes yeah so this regarding the docker kubernetes thing uh, you said like certification like ck and ckd uh, like uh, the duration is like one hour is there a practical session with that yes yes all with all the sessions are practicals so oh, the entire 60 sessions uh, sessions will be practical only my teaching always will be 20% critical and 80% will be practicals is it offline and online or just off online is online online batch there is no offline batch yes yes there is no offline batch there are other there are other trainers are there but i'm not going to teach you in the offline i'm okay. I'm, i'm just going to take you in the online batch okay you are taking only online batches okay, yes. okay. thanks that's all from my thank you okay. satish hi sir uh, thank you uh, so along with this uh, jenkin for 3 years experience uh, what are the other uh, technologies or skill set that we need to learn to to become a devops engineer sorry you want to become a devops engineer yeah your question is you want other skill set what you require other skill sets yeah what other skill sets we need uh, yeah so is go with the docker would be good yeah you go with the docker kubernetes terraform jenkins maven git or bitbucket what it will think will be fine and simple these are the skill set we require to become a devops in the net so yes. keep nexus also come in the picture okay sir thank you yeah yes ranjit patil uh yes sir uh thank you sir uh sir for ck and ckd uh, when you said uh, that the batches are starting actually so tomorrow is a, tomorrow is a demo session we have after that the classes are going to be start regular classes okay okay and for uh, uh, for the placement purpose means uh, any support and assistance provided that we can talk with admin team okay i have given the number okay. in the chat okay. means uh, admin team i have to discuss right okay yes yes okay okay thank you oh. there is a plan training pro- training and placement program is there uh, you can talk with the, them guys yes sayed thank you sir for giving me the chance to speak to you thank you for today's session it is really really helpful and um, i already took the classes before but today's session is helpful for me to get the complete picture from uh, how the flow goes from 
one end to the other. This is really helpful. But I want to reach out to you privately as well because I have some other questions which I don't want to discuss here because it will disturb others. So if it is possible, please, uh, how can I reach out uh, uh, you? Uh, if you could provide your contacts, uh, I'll be happy to uh, take it and discuss with you privately. And you can just contact my admin team. They'll provide my contact number, okay? Fine. Okay. Okay, we'll do. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Vivan Singh. Yes, guys. So I think I will take last question. I will move on. Yes, we want thing. Yes, sir, I I want to become a DevOps engineer and I want to put three years gap experience. Sir, how can I prepare? You have to prepare means you have to take uh, the good mentor who is going to train you on the, all the tools. You have to practice every day at least four hours in a day. Uh, After sir, three months, yes. Uh, sir, which tools uh, going to write uh, uh, Ansible or SAP, sir? Marketing. Sorry, sir. Which tools going right now? Ansible or SAP for me? No, I didn't get your question properly. Which tool, uh, sir? Uh, running tool uh, in the market, Ansible or SAP? Terraform. Terraform. Okay. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay, Himanshu is the last question, guys. Thank you very much. Yes, Himanshu, go ahead. Yes, I know you guys, a lot of questions you have. You can contact the admin team. They will just give a proper direction. Uh, AWS Cloud is in this. Yes. Sir, please tell me a bit for Java backend developer to use experience learn certification course. It is really going to help you a lot if you take the certification course development team. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Uh, have a wonderful day.